Welcome to this edition of Bitcoin Brief. It is Tuesday, July 21st. I'm Christine Lee, a journalist uh, with Tone Vase, our Bitcoin consultant, trader, and educator, and Jimmy Song, our Bitcoin programmer on the show, who can talk about all things tech. So uh, lots of uh, crazy COVID continuing on in the United States, new record, records and in infections hit every day. Uh, Trump now asking people to wear masks. How are things going on in your end, Tone? Uh, well, as we were talking in pre-show, uh, I'm starting to get very concerned about uh, you know, the future of travel, the future of uh, people's freedoms. Uh, the number of infections is going up, but the number of deaths, uh, from what I've seen, is not. Especially, you know, deaths of people under 50, uh, especially deaths of people that are in decent physical condition. Uh, so uh, I look at this differently. Uh, the way I look at it is the time to prepare for COVID uh, for yourself was between the age of 18 and January of this year. And uh, if you are under 18, then the job to prepare you for COVID uh, had to depend on your parents uh, by eating healthy, staying healthy. And uh, if you are older or you are uh, in bad physical shape, uh, then you have to be the one that's careful. Uh, and uh, you know your loved ones have to be careful for you. Uh, so it's unfortunate where this is going, but uh, for me, I'm just picturing a future where everyone has like, uh, you know, uh, a bracelet monitor or God forbid a chip so that the government just watches every second of every day of where you go making 1984 look unrealistic uh, because it didn't go far enough. That's where, that's where my mind's been wondering the last couple of well, days, weeks. Very dystopian world and stranger than fiction reality we're seeing these days. Jimmy, I know you have similar concerns. How are things going down? I mean, it's uh, honestly a little boring, uh, you know, like being at home all the time and doing the same things. Uh, I mean, like Tone, I would love to be, uh, you know, traveling to places and uh, hanging out with Bitcoiners from around the world like we usually do. But, uh, but that's unfortunately not something that looks like uh, will come to pass for a while. Um, there is a Bitcoin conference in Dallas that's uh, slated to go ahead next month, which I'm looking forward to. But there's a lot of, uh, I mean, just it's, it, it, I, I, I didn't realize that this would go on for this long. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the, it's, it's just kind of a crazy world right now. Yeah. yeah Jimmy, I'm is... still, oh, sorry. I'm still 50, 50. on going to that. Uh, to be mm. honest, I just don't want to deal with going through the airports and sitting <laughs> on a flight in a mask. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I just don't want to deal with the hassle. I mean, traveling is a hassle enough and I got used to it, but the inconvenience of travel has just gone up uh, exponentially and I almost don't want to do it. Oh, you can, you can take a car I and mean, that's, you know, road trips are fun, if you, especially if you get somebody with you. Not, not in my car. Maybe if I buy that Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've nice. been, I've been going back and forth between Canada and the United States. I'm in Massachusetts right now. And I found that in Canada, at least, they were very strict on uh, letting in foreigners. They gave calls almost uh, every day, every other day to make sure that you were abiding by a 14 day quarantine. I arrived in uh, Massachusetts and Boston uh, earlier uh, this week and found that there was nothing like that. There was kind of a sign at the corner of a baggage claim saying, uh, we urge you to abide by a 14 day quarantine <laughs> while in Massachusetts. Uh, but I've seen in the airports at least, uh, it's been pretty empty um, from what I've seen. And um, with that, nevertheless, uh, let's take a look at some of the headlines in the Bitcoin world right now. So it's during sharing my screen. And first up, we've got the Twitter hack um, aftermath. Um, an exchange Coinbase blocked a thousand Bitcoin transactions. Uh, we have a little Ross, a palette here of all the people 
VIP Twitter users who were hacked, uh, Barack Obama, Kanye West, Elon Musk, Joe Biden, Bloomberg, Bezos. All right, so cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase prevented thousands of pounds worth of Bitcoin being transferred to scammers during the Twitter hack. The attack saw high profile accounts such as Bill Gates and Joe Biden falsely tweet requests for Bitcoin. Coinbase said it had blacklisted the hacker's wallet address, preventing more than a thousand customers from sending about $280 thousand dollars twitter is still investigating the matter so far the company has said that the hackers targeted employees who had access to internal systems and tools it has now limited access to these tools and temporarily blocked users from being able to tweet bitcoin wallet addresses uh, the attackers had access to 130 accounts and used 45 of these to ask members of the public to send bitcoin before coinbase noticed the scam 14 of its users had sent about three thousand dollars worth of bitcoin it added it had blocked transactions within a couple of minutes of the initial wave of scam posts. It is believed the scammer stole about 120,000 in Bitcoin total. Uh, and just a comment uh, I'll read here. Exchanges as they seek greater legitimacy and recognition in financial markets and institutions are taking on more of the responsibilities of that. So, you know, this seems like a positive for exchanges tone uh, but I know you're very, you're not so uh, impressed by Coinbase, but what are your thoughts? Um, sure. Uh, real quick though, if you go back to that picture on the cover, the cover picture, I found it like hilarious that only two of the people are not involved in like the presidential race. Oh no, three, sorry. <laughs> uh, so there's more like there's four, uh, like, like, right. presidential candidates or former presidents at three there are They're billionaires it's, or presidential candidates. <laughs> uh, so Kanye is running for president as well and Bloomberg just got out. Okay, so look, um, I'm not surprised because uh, Coinbase is a centralized entity so they can freeze where you're sending your money or not. Now, uh, sure, this time around, they are freezing your uh, ability to send money because they know it's a scam account. Uh, but tomorrow they're going to be freezing you sending your money to your friend because they can. Uh, I do want to add that, you know, the probability of a person sending uh, Bitcoin to this scam is significantly higher if your Bitcoin is held by a third party like Coinbase. Uh, because those that really understand Bitcoin, uh, they're holding on to their own Bitcoin with their own keys. And if you are smart enough to hold on to your own Bitcoin with your own keys, uh, then you are certainly, uh, well, hopefully you're smart enough uh, not to fall for these outright, you know, obvious, uh, uh, a Nigerian prince left you a billion dollars scam. And, um, and again, this goes to uh, who's, who's really investing in these Bitcoin. And if you are falling, I like, again, I feel bad. Uh, and these scams are everywhere. By the way, this scam appears as an ad in front of this video more often than not for the last week or so. Uh, the same exact scam that got the Twitter people. Uh, YouTube uh, it has it as a legitimate ad in front of my videos. I tried removing it, but YouTube isn't letting me. Uh, I can't seem to log into my AdSense. Different story. Anyway, uh, I digress on that one. And uh, again, it's a way to separate people from their Bitcoin. Uh, and I don't want it to sound too insensitive, but if you are falling for this particular scam, oh, I really question your uh, judgment in investing in the crypto space because it's not good. This is how you fall for actual scam coins and uh, it helps no one. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm not surprised this is happening and uh, uh, I don't want to say that it should happen, but it's an inevitability when a third party is holding your keys. All right, Jimmy, um, same question. I mean, this seems to be a positive for uh, Coinbase and taking this action, but uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I, they're protecting the users from themselves, which, uh, which I generally am not a big fan of because like Tone said, uh, if you're protecting them against themselves in this this particular thing, it may seem good, but later on, it's you know they they might be just taking the money because you have back taxes that you owe that uh, that the government claims or something like that. So 
in a sense, uh, keeping it on there is uh, it, 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 the sword cuts both ways, and you you can't um, you know prevent one without also prevent or you can't uh, allow for one and not allow for the other. Um, it, it's also interesting that Coinbase uh, said it it prevented more than two hundred eighty thousand dollars going to these addresses. Uh, and the, the extent to which the addresses actually got money was only like 140,000. So that means that double the number, uh, du double the amount could have easily been uh, claimed if they successfully you know, did something where they disable Coinbase at the same time, um, which, uh, which is a little bit concerning, uh, you know, like just how dumb some of those people kind of are. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, it's uh, not a great situation. And I imagine that this will encourage more, um, more hacks against Twitter um, and Coinbase and things like that. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. It's, it's a good thing in a way because it hardens the system, but it's not good because Coinbase is centralized. Uh, I just want to add one more little comment. I, I like these hackers. They wasted such an they wasted such an opportunity. All they had to do was buy a couple of semi liquid shit coins and then start tweeting out from these accounts <laughs> that they're into those shit coins uh, or even like Bitcoin. Uh, just buy a bunch of Bitcoin and uh, tweet out from. Uh, you know, Barack Obama and Kanye that they're loading up on Bitcoin and going all in. Uh, like there could have been such better ways uh, or, you know, hacking Vitalik's account and then tweeting out that Ethereum got hacked uh, while uh, shorting Ethereum. Well, like there was just so much easier ways <laughs> to make money from having control of these Twitter accounts uh, through crypto uh, that they would have been able to cash out and these uh, anonymous exchanges uh, because they wouldn't even know who's holding those coins or who's profiting from the pump. It was just like, man, the criminals need to get smarter. <laughs> That's a really good point, Tone. I think some of the exper uh, security experts who are investigating this uh, hack said that, you know, at least it wasn't any worse, like a, a moment where the markets were moving uh, due to be one of these uh, VIP accounts tweeting that, you know, I bought a lot of Bitcoin or uh, this stock is too high, et cetera, or that it wasn't some sort of governmental policy um, announcement that could have, I don't know, impacted markets or some sort of domestic issue. Um, and I, I see a funny comment from Bitcoin Motorist. If you're smart enough to own Bitcoin, you're probably smart enough to avoid this scam unless you're a Coinbase customer. Yeah, so, <laughs> that's pretty much it. <laughs> a couple of observations there. Uh, next story, we've got um, a couple of uh, central banks around the world looking at digital currencies. Bank of England debating digital currency creation. Uh, the Bank of England is reviewing whether it should create a central bank back digital currency, according to Governor Andrew Bailey. We're looking at the question of, should we create a Bank of England digital currency? Um, Bailey said on Monday, we'll go on looking at it as it does have huge implications on the nature of payments and society. I think in a few years time, we will be heading towards some sort of digital currency. The Bank of England is part of a group of major central banks teaming up to assess potentially developing their own digital currencies, acknowledging their role is being challenged by new technologies and private sector initiatives such as Facebook, Inc., Libra. It could be some time before the UK Central Bank is able to fully devote its attention to such a deployment, however. And we've also got um, Banque de France. Banque de France selects eight firms to experiment with digital currency creation. Uh, the Bank of France is to work with eight firms in testing applications for a central bank digital currency interbank settlements. The central bank issued a call for applications in April. Eight applicants have been shortlisted for the test phase, Accenture, EuroClear, HSBC, Isnes, Liquid Share, Prosper US, Siva Bank, and Societe Generale Forge. Uh, experiments proposed by the successful applicants will allow one exploring new ways of exchanging financial instruments, excluding crypto assets for central bank money, two, testing the settlement in central bank digital currency in order to improve exec ex executing conditions for cross-border payments, and three, revising the arrangements for making central bank 
money available. All right. So, uh, Jimmy, what's what's your what are your thoughts on these central banks uh, dabbling in the technology here? <laughs> well, they're not really dabbling per se. It, it's uh, it, it's really upgrading their IT infrastructure. I, I've said this before. This is not anything new. Uh, the, the, their currencies, for the most part, are already digital. It's a, it, it's an entry in their central bank database. What they're talking about is making that more accessible um, and easier to use. Uh, and it, it's really more a UX uh, improvement than anything. Uh, you know, in the US, they were talking about a digital dollar as a way to give everybody uh, their own bank account. Um, and instead of having bank accounts with various different banks, just have a bank account in the central bank, and then you don't have to worry about all the all of this other stuff. Um, and you know, I, I could see some merit in doing that if you were, uh, a, you know, somebody uh, that that was concerned about like all the fees and things like that. I, I would say that this is along those same lines. It's, uh, uh, you know, it, it gives uh, you know they can sell it as a way for people to get, uh, you know, checking or savings accounts without having to pay so many fees to the bank. But also think of it from uh, the government's perspective. It's a it's a great way for them to spy on a, uh, all their citizens and have all their financial data. Uh, so uh, it doesn't surprise me in the least, and that's probably what they're thinking as a way to, uh, you know, stop or. You know, they'll sell it as stopping terrorism or child porn or something like that. But really, they just uh, they they want more control over your life, and that's that's what they're thinking here. Right, more control over your life. Uh, Tone, what do you think of the central bank's entry into digital currencies vis-a-vis -vis Bitcoin? Yeah, we've been uh, covering the story as far back as I don't know 2015 or 2016 because uh, this always bubbles up, and I always have the same answers. Uh, this has nothing to do with a uh, blockchain. This has nothing to do with uh, decentralized currency. This is basically the digital representation uh, with 100% digital of currently 98% digital currency that the governments already have. Most governments, some governments like India have a lot more cash in circulation uh, that's used in their economy than others. Uh, but in Europe, in the US, the, the majority of transactions already are fully digital. The majority of all that money is fully digital. And all the money that they're printing, they're not printing it in dollar bills. In fact, there is a coinage shortage in the US right now. <laughs> have you run into that yet, Jimmy? I already have. Uh, I have not. <laughs> I, was, um, I was at Trader Joe's and I was buying something. And uh, my change was, I don't know, like three, I don't know, like, like 15 bucks and like 30 cents or something. And I told them, don't bother with the change. Just I'll just take the bills. And they actually thanked me uh, because they have a, they're they're in a coinage shortage. Uh, so <laughs> they, they they thanked me that I that I left them a, a few cents in the register. Anyway, so uh, governments have always wanted to get rid of cash. And I tweeted out a video today of people breaking into a bank, or breaking into a Wells Fargo. And uh, again, no one would be breaking into banks if there's no cash. Uh, there will be no run on the bank if there's no cash because you can't withdraw anything. There'll be no ATMs uh, uh, if there's no cash. I mean, all of that is gone. Uh, governments can impose any interest rate that they like. Whatever negative interest rate floats their boat, uh, they can just impose that. Uh, they think they will eliminate all uh, tax fraud and uh, uh, they want to monitor your transactions. That's what they're thinking. I don't understand why they want to create a new currency instead of simply eliminating cash of their current currency. Uh, but hey, people need jobs doing something silly and different. Uh, but also governments love to cancel current currency and create new currency. I mean, Venezuela recently did that, didn't solve their problem though. Uh, so governments love creating new currency so they can cancel the old currency. Uh, the only one that doesn't do that is the US dollar. So the US dollar is the most likely one to go to a straight up digital dollar. Uh, but all these other countries, maybe not the UK, uh, because they have a history of their uh, currency, but any other country besides the UK and the US will probably cancel their current currency and create a whole new currency uh, so that they can have first access to new money and it will all be digital. So they have first, first future access uh, to all new money. Do you think that they would ever require 
people to pay in their digital currency of taxes or otherwise? Well, of course, um, all, uh, all new taxes will be paid in this digital currency. In fact, uh, one of the reasons some of these countries will create this new currency through the central bank uh, is so that you don't have to pay your taxes going forward. They will make your life a lot easier and your paycheck will go straight to the central bank. They will withdraw the taxes and leave you with the rest. Now, that, of course, makes your life simpler in that you may not have to file a tax return, but they will just take it up front. Okay. Um, moving on, let's take a look at uh, Ethereum. Blockchain is watching you, profiling and de-anonymizing Ethereum. So the abstract says Ethereum is the largest public blockchain by usage. It applies an account-based model, which is inferior to Bitcoin's unspent transaction output model from a privacy perspective. As the account-based models for blockchains force address reuse, we show how transaction graphs and other quasi-identifiers of users such as time of day activity, transaction fees, and transaction graph analysis can be used to reveal some account owners. To the best of our knowledge, we are the first to propose and implement Ethereum user profiling techniques based on our on user quasi identifiers. Due to the privacy shortcomings of the account-based model, recently several privacy enhancing overlays have been deployed on Ethereum, such as non-custodial trustless coin mixers and confidential transactions. We assess the strengths and weaknesses of the existing privacy enhancing solutions and quantitatively assess the privacy guarantees of the Ethereum blockchains and ENS. We identify several heuristics as well as profiling and de-anonymization techniques against some popular and emerging privacy enhanced tools. Okay, so, uh, Tone, can you break this down for us? Sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, I I'm going to make this really, really quick if you want to just scroll up a little bit. So I managed to read the entire abstract of this paper. Uh, however, I just scroll down a tiny bit. Perfect, right there. Uh, uh, even though I did manage to read the entire abstract, uh, I probably did not have to go past the first sentence uh, after I read the following, which is inferior to Bitcoin's unspent transaction output model from a privacy perspective. Uh, so uh, I, I, I'm not gonna read this whole thing. It makes no sense for me to read this whole thing. I've said this about the link uh, is a fraud paper in that um, basically um, I phrased it in the form of my geology degree as to why I don't read this stuff is because I know that uh, the earth is round. And uh, if someone writes a white paper telling me why the earth is flat, I'm not going to read it uh, to enlighten myself. And then if someone does a bunch of research to disprove the white paper that the earth is flat, uh, to then prove that it's round, that is also not the paper I'm interested in reading. And I would rather do something else with my time. Uh, so once again, I wish that these researchers who seem really, really smart, uh, who wrote this giant thing, would have spent their time more productively than researching Ethereum, which is an outright disaster. Uh, so I will uh, hand it off to Jimmy at this point. Uh, I'm sure nothing there surprises me. So I'm sure nothing there surprises him. Yeah, it's uh, it, essentially this is the major weakness of Ethereum, honestly, is that they, they work on an account-based system instead of a UTXO-based system. What that means is that instead of having a new address for every new uh, new transaction, which is what you generally do in Bitcoin. Um, in Ethereum, you use the same quote unquote address for everything. And, uh, and it's very sticky and you use it over and over again. Um, and that, uh, that obviously means that you are very easy to de-anonymize. And indeed, uh, you know, there, there were certain, um, names registered, you know, if you've seen some of the, um, Ethereum Twitter accounts, they'll say something like Vitalik.f or something like that. That's that's sort of like a shorthand for his address and you could register it using some uh, scammy token or something like that. Um, and they could do, they using that, they were able to trace like a, a ton of people that, uh, you know, like pretty positively who, how much Ethereum they owned and so on. So, um, I, Ethereum is terrible for a lot of things. This is just another one uh, that it's terrible for. And it's, 
uh, preserving any sense of privacy whatsoever. Um, and you know, I, we, we've gone over why privacy coins don't actually provide that much privacy because they don't, uh, they don't let you hide in a very big anonymity set. Uh, Ethereum, uh, though it has a larger volume, just simply makes it very, very easy to de-anonymize. So it's, it's not very good from that perspective. Hmm. All right. Um, moving on over to <laughs> some various shit coins uh, we're going to take a look at. Um, collisions, trivial collisions in IOTA's hash function. Parentheses. Curl, historical context of IOTA's hash functions. Once upon a time, research di researchers discovered that the hash function used within the IOTA cryptocurrency was vulnerable to practical collisions. When pressed about this, the IOTA Foundation said the following. Uh, IOTA claims curl P was a backdoor. Um, let me have a, the tweet here. Um, in response to this research, the IOTA developers threatened to sue the researchers. And another tweet here. Oh, good. Here's an IOTA founder darkly threatening to sue a researcher who found out that the IOTA hash function was broken, something he later claimed was done on purpose. And we have uh, here uh, he <laughs> the threat. He should be scared. There are lawyers working on that already. IOTA replaced Perl P27 with a hash function based on KSAC. 384, they call curl. KSAC, if you may recall, is a sponge function that went on to become SHA-3. At its base, this sounds like a conservative choice in cryptography protocol design. Migrate from a backdoored hash function to one trusted and respected by cryptographers around the world. Um, I would even offered a bug bounty for attacks against reduced round variants. There it is. Uh, curl isn't KSAC 384, though, it's KSAC 384 with a bit of an odd twist. They encode the input bytes into ternary before hashing. Apparently, this weird obsession with ternary encoding is part of IOTA's shtick. I'll go down to the bottom takeaways. IOTA is a cryptocurrency project that threatens security. Researchers intentionally backdoored the crypto cryptographic hash function in their original design and admitted to it and designed a replacement cryptographic hash function that is vulnerable to trivial collision attacks. I don't need to connect the lines on this one, do I? Um, the, uh, I'm gonna take a look at this other one. Oh, no, no, let's, let's cover that or one. Do you, cover that do you wanna one. go with? Uh... Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, right. uh, let's get Jimmy's take on this. Uh, I didn't know that IOTA was relevant and still existed uh, when this article came across our radar, it turns out this insanity is still in the top 20 uh, of coin market cap uh, because people are unreasonably stupid. Uh, however, uh, all of the IOTA trolls seem to just change their Twitter handles and pictures to now be linked, li chain link trolls, uh, which is uh, our next topic. But I'll let Jimmy uh, talk about the tech here. <laughs> yeah, I... Uh, this is hilarious because IOTA early on in its history um, had its curl uh, hash function, C-U-R-L, uh, completely broken by the MIT researchers. This is uh, Hatch, Dreja, Niha, Narula, and, and so on. They're part of the Digital Currency in Initiative. And they they figured out, okay, they made this homebrew uh, hash function and it was completely broken. And of course, uh, they tried to patch it and they went ahead and use the derivative of KESAC 384, which is, um, you know, KESAC is part, part of the SHA-3 family of hash functions, which is a very respected hash function family. Um, SHA-256 is a SHA-2 family, which, uh, so, you know, KESAC is sort of the next iteration uh, that uh, NIST has uh, granted as, uh, as the next uh, hashing function family uh, to use. Uh, but, Regardless, they implemented it so poorly um, uh, that that their new hash function is also broken. Um, and this new hash function was uh, was so originally named curl K E R L instead of the previous one C U R L. So uh, you know, essentially, they they screwed up uh, like multiple times on this, uh, and this is why you shouldn't roll your own crypto, especially if you're not very good at it, as this uh, the, this group of developers seem to. Uh, not be very good. <laughs> yeah, they're, they, they're just not very good developers. Um, and with cryptographic stuff, you have to be 
extremely strong at, uh, at, at stuff if you're going to uh, create your own um, hash function. Um, you know, going from binary to ternary encoding or something like that. Just uh, it, it's there. There's so many ridiculous and unnecessary uh, steps. Uh, generally, with cryptography, you want to keep things as simple as possible in order to be able to understand uh, all the different ways in which it can get attacked. Uh, they're not following this, um, and you know th this is kind of what happens when you try to roll your own crypto. Is that you screw up, and uh, you know I, I think they they had to shut down their coordinator service, which is their central point of failure for like a month or something. Um, and they, they've, uh, they've had to shut this thing down multiple times in their history. So uh, how this, uh, the, this currency is in the top 20 of coin market cap, I have no idea. But uh, I do know that their developers are very quick to sue and very quick to um, try to shut people up that uh, try to criticize them like me and Tone. Uh, I know I've received threatening emails in the past from them. Um, th that's more their shtick than anything else is, uh, you know, kind of church of Scientology strategy of uh, try to um, use lawfare in order to uh, shut people up. Yeah, the amount of like hate we got uh, last <laughs> year and earlier this year, maybe for calling this uh, project basically a shit coin, a scam coin, whatever you know you want to call it. I usually call these things outright scams. Uh, the coins themselves are, and uh, I'm still not sure what the hell IOTA is supposed to do. And it, honestly, it doesn't matter. Uh, the moment I know it has its own uh, shit coin, the coin itself is a scam. Uh, there is a ninety. Uh, there's a hundred percent chance the coin's a scam. Uh, there is a ninety-nine percent chance the protocol is totally useless. Uh, maybe there's a one percent chance the protocol is useful. But the, because it has a token, that gives it the scam component of, to the protocol. So um, wasting time learning about these projects is a horrible way to spend your time. And I wish all of these developers, instead of trying to find flaws in these horrible projects, that those flaws will find their own way uh, to resonate or the creators will just exit scam or they'll stop developing these protocols and they'll be gone. Uh, again, I would rather have smart people that know how to code a code on Bitcoin, but obviously 99% uh, of people that are working on shit coins are not smart enough or useful enough to code for Bitcoin. 99%, uh, there's always one, you know, there's always some shit coin developer that spots a bug in the Bitcoin code. And that makes me question what the hell is that person doing from an ethical perspective working on the shit coin? <laughs> Uh, speaking of shit coins, uh, the Chainlink fraud exposed. Oh, yeah. An investigative oh, report yeah. on why Chainlink is the crypto's wider card. And so the executive summary goes, there is abundant evidence of market manipulation with trades of classic pump and dump techniques such as trading on inside information, front running and general public, unsubstantiated claims of progress, uh, artificial transactions to imitate adoption, bogus partnership announcements and any other trick in the book to drive up the price prior to dumping link into innocent onto in, innocent investors uh, it goes on smart contract the company behind chain link controls all aspects of the onboarding process of each aspiring node operator acting as sole gatekeeper to the ecosystem and compromising the legitimacy decentralization and independence of the network the tokenomics model is broken uh, despite the project's colossal development budget, Chainlink still runs in, on an Ethereum-based testnet, exposing users to gas price fluctuations. The two founders behind Chainlink are constantly selling Link from their vast reserves at the market. Uh, Link's characteristics, such as lack of decentralized ecosystem, combined with recent decisions by the SEC, leave no doubt that Link will be classified as a security an absolute dissonance with the price action, the actual usage of the chain link, net, chain link network is fading, et cetera, et cetera. And so the um, conclusion as a result, Zeus Capital maintains a strong sell recommendation on Link with a target price of about seven cents. So we believe that in the near to midterm, this will become another classical going down to zero fiasco. Um, but we also, have um you know this let, me, let me let me let me cover that part okay. because i'm actually mentioned in that story All right. okay 
I want to steal. I want to steal a screen share here for a second. I, yeah. I absolutely, I absolutely love this story. It's hilarious. Um, Jimmy, uh, mm. now, uh, you, you know what? Let, let me, let me, let me lead this in. Then I'm gonna ask a question to Jimmy. So, so here's what happened. So. What happened was uh, this website showed up. Uh, I mean, I, it got on my radar like a few days ago, uh, but apparently this website is maybe seven months old or something. And it's Zeus underscore capital.com, which is Zeus Capital Asset Management and research firm. And, uh, you know, uh, website, they have some contact information. I actually emailed them and I've been uh, going back and forth with one of the people from there. I don't want to name any names. Uh, so I've been... Uh, messaging with them. So um, supposedly this is a capital management firm. So what happens is, so this Zeus Capital, which is, this is their Twitter handle, uh, Zeus Capital LLP, uh, got confused with this Zeus Capital, which is also <laughs> a, another hedge fund. And you can see that their Twitter has been around since 2011, a lot longer than my Twitter has been around. I only joined Twitter, I think in 2014. So uh, that Zeus Capital got confused with this Zeus Capital, and these guys were like got bombarded by the by the Link Army, which is starting to border on the XRP Army. That's how massive and how brainwashed they are. So uh, the art article comes out this morning. Um, it popped up on my uh, Google News Feed because I have a uh, I'm notified whenever my name is in an article. Uh, so every day I get something. So this article uh, kind of talks about it and it says right here, uh, prominent trader and Bitcoin maximalist Tone Vase. I really wish you guys start calling me shitcoin minimalist. Uh, Tone Vase praised the quality of the report, uh, claiming that it must have taken months to conduct this kind of thorough research. Uh, and then they also talked about how uh, this company may or may not exist. And also the interesting part is, uh, of course, uh, since there are so many uh, brainwashed link supporters, uh, they started digging into the code of something and they found references to Nexo. Now, I'm not sure what Nexo is. I think Nexo is another shit coin, um, <laughs> coin market cap. So I love this story on so many ways. So first of all, uh, and they just got bombarded, including me, that this is a fake report. I don't understand how this report could possibly be fake. It's actually 59. So I started reading this report. Uh, because I only read the executive summary. And this is that thing that I said earlier about uh, the earth being round. I can phrase it another way for you guys. I don't need a report that uh, manure smells bad. I don't need to read that research. I know that manure smells bad, right? I don't need to read a research paper. So when the executive summary completely aligns with shit that I was saying about coins like Link, before Link existed, there's almost no reason for me to read the details as to why this report is uh, substantiating what I've said. Now, here's the question for Jimmy, because prior to reading this report, and, and the Link supporters are gonna love this statement, please cut out the next part and please share it with everyone. So prior to about, I don't know, an hour ago, when I started reading this report, maybe two hours ago, uh, I made it to like page seven, I did not actually know what L Chainlink did. Uh, do you know what Chainlink does, Jimmy? No, not really. <laughs> perfect. That is absolutely perfect. So my assumption prior to three hours ago, when I've been calling Chainlink the scam for over a year now, had nothing to do with me knowing what Chainlink does. It's just my experience of being in the crypto space since 2013 and understanding how the technology worked. So let me, and then when I started reading it, I couldn't stop laughing because people kept telling me how amazing Chainlink is. And that's why I wanted to cover this story. So let me explain to you what Chainlink does. So remember Augur? Yeah. Right. So Chainlink is the new Augur. So Chainlink, <laughs> is, it's, 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 it's even funnier than that. So Chainlink is a middleman blockchain that its only job is to be an oracle. So <laughs> that's his job. And in order to decide which nodes are good oracles, they um, bribe them with the link token. 
and the oracles stake the link token. And if they are, pre provide the wrong information, they surrender the link token. So okay. So other shitcoin projects, it sounds like are utilizing Chainlink for their Oracle management. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so like, as I, I've been saying for years, the moment you start reading about these shitcoin projects, they become funnier and scammier and more ridiculous than if you did not actually look into them. Like, <laughs> I, I didn't get very far, but it's freaking hilarious, man. This project is beyond dumb. And <laughs> it's, I, and this thing pumps to $8. And people, and it's like Ripple. I think it's actually dumber than Ripple. Um, I, like I said, I only made it to about page <laughs> seven or eight. Uh, how far? No, I, oh, wow, I went longer. I think I made it all the way. Oh, I got past that part. Wow, I made it all the way to page 11. So I haven't gotten to the rest of it yet. But uh, this is hilarious. So I'm just going to read the, this is the first part. There's only page 10 of 60. Uh, so this is the first part that had to do with what iota, iota what Chainlink does versus what it's supposed to do. So I'm just going to read the bottom line. Chainlink is attempting to tailgate and capitalize on the Fed surrounding <laughs> smart contracts inability to interact with resources outside the blockchain. Correct. Uh, on top of being far from fully functional with vital features not expected to be delivered anytime soon, the underlying architecture of the project fails to address key issues like security, alignment of participants, incentives, and timeliness of information delivery. We argued that Chainlink Network is yet another unnecessary intermediary that, purpose, uh, that the purpose of which is to promote and support the link a pointless utility token uh, whose only use case at the moment is speculative trading and enrichment of certain groups of people, namely the founding team. Oh, I forgot to mention uh, these nodes or these oracles on the link chain have a reputation built in. So the better your reputation, the higher your probability of being accepted as an oracle. So the whole thing has already centralized where even though, and this is what this report describes, where even though there is like maybe, I don't know, a uh, hundred or so, uh, like currently there are 74 approved node operators. Oh, and every operator needs to be approved by the centralized uh, chain link company. Um, Sounds out decentralized of those, to me, yeah. Right. Out of those 79, only 16 um, are actually running almost all of the, uh, of the Oracle problems and the smart contract. So eventually this becomes one node, which is the chain link node uh, sourcing all the information. But like, <laughs> this is, like, like this is like hilarious to read. Now this report actually breaks down the stupidity of chain link and all of these uh, you know, link bag holders are screaming that this Zeus capital is not this Zeus Capital, which I actually figured out uh, before tweeting out the report within five minutes, uh, because it was very simple for me to know, because when I looked for Zeus Capital Twitter handle, I didn't find this one. I found this one, which had a different URL to their uh, investment fund. So I knew that this wasn't that, but uh, these guys uh, couldn't figure even that part out. However, here's the best part. If Zeus Capital is not even real, if this is a fake website, and if this is a competitor, uh, Nexo, whatever the hell Nexo does, if this is a competitor shitcoin putting out this report, talking shit about that shitcoin, I love the story even more. The, because here's the best part. Because you are claiming to be a decentralized protocol like Bitcoin, you shouldn't have the ability to sue anyone for fake research. Fake research about Bitcoin has been happening since 2010. And there's nobody in Bitcoin that can hold you accountable for fake research. So if all of these shit coins just start like writing these immense, very detailed research reports about each other, I love it. Like uh, Zcash should like write one on Monero and Monero should write one on Zcash. Uh, like, I don't know, I, I love this, it's great. 
Uh, but uh, just general thoughts on this, Jimmy. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, the the report reminds me of, uh, of sort of what a lot of short sellers do uh, when they release a report uh, about a company that they're currently shorting. So I suspect that Zeus Capital already has a massive short position on Link. Oh, and they oh release no, 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 Jimmy, report. Jimmy, Jimmy, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I got to interrupt. Yeah, no, 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 we know they do. They actually state that at the end of the report saying oh, I see. why we have a massive short position on Link. And in my conversations with them, they're literally telling me how they're shorting it even more. Like, like, like they're not wow. denying this. They're <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, they, this is a common thing in the short selling world uh, where they'll find all sorts of accounting irregularities and things like that. Uh, you know, they're, they're, there's a bunch of uh, companies that, that do this and they put in a significant amount of research into doing that before they take out the massive short position. And then at that point, what they'll do is release a report like this and uh, try to basically sway the market towards uh, towards selling this stuff. And they uh, and many of them have been enormously successful. Uh, a lot of uh, short traders have uh, have basically sunk uh, these fraudulent companies, and they do an excellent service. And uh, good on uh, Zeus Capital for doing that because that is one thing that I wish the crypto space had more of are people uh, that are incentivized to out these frauds. And, uh, and, and these companies are just straight up frauds and they, they, they need to go away. So um, I'm very appreciative of what, uh, what they've done with this report. Um, and I hope they're really successful because I wanna see more reports like this, not just from them, but a whole market of these so that, uh, so that people can figure out, hey, these guys are doing shady things because the only, uh, only reports that you'll ever see about Chainlink are made by the Chainlink people, right? There's nobody economically incentivized enough to actually say anything about non, uh, say anything good, uh, anything bad about Chainlink from the Chainlink side. Yeah, and also I remember this was before uh, Bitcoin. Uh, I don't remember what year, it might have been 2011 or something. I was trading or maybe even earlier than that. Two monster hedge fund managers, it was like Carl Icahn and another guy, they mm. went at it because like one of them was a big investor in this company called Herbalife. I'm sure you heard mm. of it, Jimmy. Yeah, uh, yeah. The a multi-level marketing of vitamins. <laughs> and and uh, so one hedge fund manager is like a big investor and another huge hedge fund manager published this giant report on how the company is fraudulent because of the MLM aspect of it. And it blew up all over the financial media. It was like it was like watching billions, you know, like play <laughs> out. Uh, if you if you ever watch the show, uh, just Google it, guys. Uh, I know Carl Icahn was one, and I forgot the other hedge fund manager's name. But it was like this was the story in the new in the financial media for months, months. They went at it as to why one hedge fund is shorting the shit out of this company. Hmm. Yeah, and, uh, and that, that's a good thing. You, you need short sellers. Um, and it, it's, uh, if, if these coins ever get any more liquidity, this is exactly what will happen. And uh, in a sense, uh, they're, they're screwed either way. If they lack liquidity, they're going to go down because they don't have any liquidity. And if they gain liquidity, then you're going to attract uh, you know, companies like Zeus Capital. So there is no upside for these, uh, the, these fraudulent companies, essentially. Oh yeah, that's, so that's that's the wrong Zeus Capital uh, you have on the <laughs> page here right now. So yeah, so that's the confusion right now. Now, does this other Zeus Capital exist or is it a fake website? I don't know. It's not my job to figure that out. I'm reading the report and I'm really enjoying it. I hey, at the least I learned what Link does and it's even worse than I, I didn't even know what it did, but I didn't know it was this stupid until after I, until I started reading this report. Oh yeah, so tell us how stupid this Oracle solution is, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, you got you gotta love it. You gotta love it. Uh, anyway, actually, don't 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 tell us. People will people will learn for themselves. Okay, now we can move on. So, <laughs> excellent. Still mystery of who's this Zeus Capital is, but oh, they, uh, also, they also promised to come on my show. Well, they didn't really promise, but. Um, they said one of the, and, and in my initial discussions, they were going to let one of their writers, researchers from the report 
uh, come uh, on this show to talk to me about the report. But now I'm not, after my last couple of emails, uh, I'm not sure that's going to happen. But honestly, I'm not. <laughs> All right. Moving on. Uh, Bitcoin mining hash rate and power analysis. All right. So let's go straight to the key takeaways here. About 50% of the 9.6 gigawatt global mining power capacity is likely in China. The US is at about 14% capacity. Utilization is about 67%. Median BTC mining power cost is 3C kilowatt hours and cost to mine is 1P BTC to is about 5,000. Hash rate could reach 260 exahash per second in 12 months and 360 exahash second in 24 months with an upgrade cycle but needs about 6.3 billion in capital capex. Funding gap is 4.1 billion versus industry cash generation. Price needs to appreciate by $1,000 for every uh, 10 exahash per second increase to stay revenue neutral per megawatt hour. Cheap power, Bitcoin price, and semiconductor shipments are key risk factors to our estimates. Uh, this coming from Bit Ouda Research. Tone, you're our tech guy. Break this down for us. Oh, you mean Jimmy? <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so this is more an economic analysis of Bitcoin mining, and uh, and this is a very thorough, um, you know, review of what's going on in mining. Um, the big big takeaway for me is that one BTC costs about five thousand dollars, so there's plenty of profit for a lot of miners still, um, despite you know all the. Uh, all the uh, worries of uh, uh, of people saying that there's going to be a mining death spiral or whatever. There's plenty of room. Uh, Five thousand dollars. That's four thousand dollars of profit. Um, if, if the B B uh, Bitcoin mining cost is around three cents per kilowatt hour, so um, you know that 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 should tell you quite a bit about where we stand in the mining industry. It is nowhere near saturated. Um, and there, there's plenty of room to go. And especially as price increases, um, you know, th this becomes even more uh, profitable. But uh, the other thing from this report that I found really intriguing is that mining uh, companies uh, generally put price appreciation into their financial model. So um, they, they expect a certain amount of Bitcoin appreciation as part of their business model. And when it's uh, and so, which, which essentially means that they will hold on to their Bitcoin for a significant amount of time and often take out loans in dollars uh, with their Bitcoins as collateral in order to pay off their bills uh, rather than selling their Bitcoin straight up. Um, that, that, that's the direction that they go in. Now, that does make them more vulnerable to giant price drops and things like that, but they're usually pretty well capitalized and have a lot of uh, capital equipment that they can use uh, as uh, uh, to get more loans and so on. So, um, you know, very, gr very good report if you want to know the economics of mining and uh, all of the FUD out there about mining death spirals and so on, you should just completely ignore because this absolutely blows all of those out of the water. Tony, your thoughts? Uh, sure, I'll add a little bit to that. Um, so the mining, the, the reason why uh, people are scared of mining death spirals is because they're doing this research on proof of work shit coins, which do face uh, a, mi a mining death spiral problem uh, because they are not able to keep up with, uh, you know, Bitcoin's slow hyper Bitcoinization as more and more demand comes into Bitcoin, people are using it. And uh, not to mention Bitcoin is necessary, but your shit coin isn't. Uh, plus Bitcoin is able to keep up with uh, the, the appreciating price. So I anticipate mining death spiral to happen in every proof of work coin because they just can't compete on the mining side of the equation. They will all start merge mining with Bitcoin eventually until they will just slowly die out because merge mining does will not make eventually will not make sense either. Um, so um, I recently did, um, uh, I had a little rant, uh, not rant, but uh, I explained why uh, this is, uh, ba this will basically keep mining going for a long, long time. But I can also envision a future where mining will be done at a loss. So this is way further into the future 
where mining doesn't even have to be profitable. Uh, if Bitcoin becomes such an integral part of society, and Bitcoin is the reason why some companies even exist, uh, like, for example, Blockstream, uh, it's to Blockstream's advantage to help promote mining, uh, which is why they also started a uh, mining operation and a mining pool, uh, because helping to keep Bitcoin decentralized uh, helps the price of Bitcoin rise. And the price of Bitcoin rising is basically probably their best uh, motive for running the company Blockstream. And there are many other companies like that. The example that I gave is Netflix saying that if Netflix starts utilizing Bitcoin to allow people to just pay for their movies and shows by scanning a QR code that pops up on their screen, Netflix could enter rampant credit card fraud regions without worrying about counterfeit uh, or scammy uh, credit card transactions. And uh, therefore, if this increases uh, Netflix revenue, uh, it makes sense for to take a piece of that revenue and use it as an expense to create a mining farm to keep Bitcoin decentralized to allow Netflix to keep providing services where credit cards are just not very good. And uh, people are saying this will never happen because of tragedy of the commons. No, that, that, that's not how it works. If I have a company uh, that relies on Bitcoin's existence, I will do whatever I can to keep Bitcoin alive, which means keeping Bitcoin decentralized. And mining is just one part that keeps Bitcoin decentralized. Uh, the other uh, little uh, explanation that I did on a different podcast was that uh, mining being centralized does not make Bitcoin centralized. Uh, Bitcoin is decentralized in three ways. You have uh, the core code, uh, the, uh, the core developers and core code, uh, uh, fully uh, validating nodes and mining. Each of those three parts leads to Bitcoin's decentralization. And each of those three parts is in itself decentralized. If you take away one of these parts, if you take away mining, your decentralization now relies on two parts instead of three. So any proof of stake shitcoin that claims they are more decentralized than Bitcoin is nonsense because mining only adds to decentralization. It doesn't take away from it. It's an extra layer of decentralization in addition to the other two. Uh, this is why all claims that my proof of stake is more decentralized because we have more nodes, even though one guy is in charge of the code and there's no mining is insane, okay? And uh, please read this report and this will finally prove to you that A, mining is decentralized and B, it's not going anywhere. Great, I think this is a good transition into a look at the mempool. Um, Here's the latest uh, mempool by VBytes. Uh, Jimmy, what's going on here with the transactions? Well, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's exactly what we expected before the weekend, although there, there were a lot more uh, one sat per byte transactions than before. So essentially, um, I, I told you uh, last at, at the end of last week that you should expect expect a lot of these transactions to clear over the weekend, they, and they certainly did. Um, uh, the only things that didn't clear were the one sat per byte transactions, which, uh, which are honestly right now flooding the network. So we got about uh, 60 to 70 megabytes uh, of, uh, of transactions that are like uh, a large amount of which are one sat per byte. Um, so right now we're, we have like some transactions that are 70, 80, 90, 100 uh, sats per byte uh, in the mempool right now, but that's starting to come down as the uh, day continues to uh, come to an end. Um, overnight, I expect a lot of those to clear. Um, if you need something done overnight, I would, I, I would expect uh, somewhere around 15 uh, to be able to be cleared overnight. But if you need something right away, you're going to have to put in 70, 80, 90. Um, but you know, if you're willing to wait a little bit, um, I imagine like five sats per byte will be pl plenty um, uh, to clear within like 24 to 48 hours. Awesome. And we want to remind people that if you are interested in learning how to program a Bitcoin library, uh, how to program Bitcoin from scratch, 
do pick up a copy of Programming Bitcoin by Jimmy Song. Learn how to program a Bitcoin library with this hands-on guide from one of the leading teachers on Bitcoin and Bitcoin programming. Author Jimmy Song shows you the basics, including the math, blocks, network, and transactions behind this popular cryptocurrency and its blockchain payment system. You'll also learn how simplified payment verification and how proof of work works. Mm. Thank you, Thanks. Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're going to take a look at the markets. Um, we saw that the S&P 500 and Dow advanced to uh, today's session about S&P up about Two tenths of a percent, Dow up about six tenths, and the Nasdaq actually fell about eight tenths of a percent. Um, Bitcoin sitting at uh, over nine thousand. Tone, what's going on here? Sure, I'll take over. Just want to point out that I've been uh, slowly updating learn trading section of my website every day. Uh, this is your free resource, and uh, I've been working on the oscillators, trying to get this section done and. Oh yeah, actually, I, I should probably update this. I've updated some other stuff, uh, but yes. Yeah, so uh, check that out. This is going to be all new with lots of resources. So uh, let's take a look. We are uh, past nine, so we should have another candle here, but maybe not yet, or maybe once it refreshes, and we do. Uh, so this is the big picture, and the, in the big picture, we are still down more than fifty percent from the ultimate high. And we are going to be coming up on the three-year anniversary fairly soon once we get into December, which is you know only a few months away at this point. Uh, here's the live action look on a weekly scale. Nothing changed. We are still stuck under resistance on this weekly scale. So the weekly chart has not yet gotten you into a bullish trade. Uh, by some metrics, uh, we went into a bullish trade over here. Uh, if we are using these little plus signs known as the lucid SARS, uh, and they are still keeping you in the bullish trade, but it has not been profitable. It's pretty much flat. Uh, not much, no action. We're consolidating. The daily chart is what is really, really interesting on Bitcoin. Today was a little bit of a breakout. Let the chart update right here. There we go. Uh, today was a little bit of a breakout. Yep, there's the green star indicating that there is a potential bullish trend change here. We just broke one, two, three areas of resistance, and we broke the parabolic SAR, indicating that there could be a bullish trend. And we just created a bullish trend based on the new MRI indicator, which is the replacement of the TI or the near term replacement of the TI. So, lots of things here leading to a breakout, but we really need at least one more day. We need one more day to take us higher. I am still a tad bit skeptical. Uh, this is not enough. I can still adjust this triangle a little bit, and we are still in the symmetric triangle. We have not officially broken through it yet. Uh, anything can still happen. Bitcoin pumped today, as was mentioned earlier, due to the stock markets pumping hard today. Uh, the S&P 500, while selling off during the day, still closed higher than the prior day. We just made a brand new swing high, and I can't really explain it. But the S&P 500 certainly went bullish on many metrics. It is now uh, rising and all the moving averages are rising. We have above, we have gone beyond the prior swing high and we really have absolutely no resistance between our current level and the all time high at 3,400. Not that far to go to get there, to be honest, like 4% left. Uh, so uh, hard to explain, but it's definitely pumping gold pumped as well. I've been a big bull on gold for quite a while. And uh, gold has also broken out. You can see it right here. Let's wait till the chart updates. Uh, gold has broken out. Again, we're going to get a trend change right here. Uh, we've broken out through prior consolidation. And gold is almost at its all-time high as well. So it's basically risk on for many, many assets. Oil went up as well. Silver went up. Pretty much everything is up. Uh, hey, uh, Europe is printing money now uh, as much as the U.S. is, and everyone is going into risky assets. Uh, I don't know when this is going to end. Uh, now, the S&P is on the verge of going to new all-time highs, and Bitcoin is still at a 50% discount from its all-time high. Uh, I don't know where you can read into that, but I still think the stock market will eventually pull back, uh, maybe from 
4,000, I don't know. Uh, but the stock, if the stock market gets to 4,000 in the next three months, Bitcoin may still be at a 60% discount to uh, its all-time high. And if a stock market then falls from 4,000 back to earlier this year's all-time high, that could still take down Bitcoin down with it. I remain of the belief that Bitcoin will still stay under $10,000 for the majority of the year. Like I wrote about back in January, we are about to go into August, which is month number eight. So I've been right for more than half the year that Bitcoin will fall to the vicinity of 5,000 before the halving, which happened, and then get stuck between seven and 10,000 for the rest of the year. And so far that's been happening as well. It will eventually break out. I do believe we're in a bull market. All right, uh, and that's uh, it for me. Uh, check out the learn trading section of uh, tonevase.com. And this uh, Saturday, I will be teaching a webinar on risk and position management. Really, really important. I'm glad that people are signing up. Uh, it's mandatory if you want to be a long-term successful trader. Uh, you don't have to learn it from me. You better learn it somewhere because this is how not following these rules is what gets people wrecked. Okay. Uh, now I'm done. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tone. Very insightful. We see the markets continue to be divorced from the reality of the economy. Uh, I think I saw, I read something about from the UBS CEO saying there was a lot of complacency or over optimism in financial markets. So we see that continuing on. Thank you very much, Tone Vase, our Bitcoin trader, consultant, and all things uh, Bitcoin, as well as Jimmy Song, our resident Bitcoin programmer, all things tech. I'm Christine Lee, uh, a journalist. And this is your edition of Bitcoin Brief on Tuesday, July 21st. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, guys. Fiat Linda S. This song is done.